In this video, we are looking at the CSEC Mathematics past paper two um, from May, June, 2022. And we're looking at the solutions for questions three and four. Let's begin. Question three, the diagram below shows four shapes, P, Q, R, and S. It's a transformation question. And our aim is to describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto these other shapes. So let's begin by doing that. Describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto Q. So the question is, how does this shape get onto this shape? The transformations that we're used to are reflections, translations, rotations, and enlargements. And looking at this one, uh, translation is a push or pull. An enlargement makes something bigger, or it can make it smaller too. And a reflection creates a mirror image. Um, this P and that Q here, this is not a mirror image. And it certainly didn't push it away. What it does look like is that it has been rotated. So once we figure out that it has been rotated, and these things come with practice. So for transformations, you have to do a lot of practice with your questions to make sure that you begin to see them. Because usually that's the hardest thing for students to just look at the diagram and see what's happening. So it takes a lot of practice. That said, this shape here was rotated onto this one. It was spun around. And since we know it's a, rota it's a rotation, the question then is, um, let's write on rotation. Um, if it's a rotation, you must say what the, what the um, direction is and what the angle is. Now, let's figure out the angle first. Now, look at corresponding sides on the shape. For example, this side here. Notice that this side here is parallel to this side here. Also that this side here is parallel to this. What that is telling you is that it's a 180 degree rotation. So the angle is 180 degrees. And if it's 180 degrees, it can go either direction. It can go clockwise or it can go anti-clockwise. -clock, anti so in this case, I'm just going to write on one of them, 180 degrees clockwise. Because 180 degrees is going to be half, half turn. So it doesn't really matter which direction you go. It's going to end up in the same place. So this one is a rotation. Of course, we can figure out the center of it. And the center of it is right here in the middle, right there. That's where you would spin it from. So the, it has a center of 7, 7. And the next one is to figure out how does P get onto R. Here is P, here is R, and this one is a little bit easier because this one looks like a reflection that is this image here is facing the object here and so the only thing next to do is to figure out what the mirror is so let's write this down this is a reflection and if you say it's a reflection you must state the mirror so what exactly is the mirror let's count this count the spaces here that's one two three four between this and this and so we know that the mirror line has to land exactly right between so this one and if you notice that it goes all the way down to x equal 1. So I'm just going to leave it here and write it as x equal 1. That's the mirror line. So it's a reflection in the line in x equal 1. So this is how p gets onto r. The next part of it is how does p get onto s? And here we have a clue that it's actually P gets bigger here. So we know that it is an enlargement or a dilation. We tend to call them enlargement. So it's an enlargement. And if it's an enlargement, we must state what the scale factor is. Um, so the scale factor is the magnification that you use to get this into this. So notice that looking at this side and look at this side, and you notice that this side is twice as long as that one, which means that we're multiplying by 2. So the scale factor is 2. And we can even go further and state the center. 
um, of the of the enlargement. To do that, to find it, what we do is that we connect two sides, two corresponding sides of the shape. So let's start with this start with this point here and that point. Let's draw a straight line through them and draw it really long, like that. And then we connect another set of points. So here is this one and this one. So we're going to connect those two and see it, they intersect at this point here, right here. And that tells us that this is where the center of the enlargement is. So it has a center of, what's this number? Seven on the X and 11 on the Y. Seven, 11, that would be the center of the enlargement. So we have fully described the transformation that moved the transformations that moved P around the graph. Next, we have another part of the question that says, on the grid, the same grid, draw the image of the shape P after a translation by the vector negative two, positive three. Now, this negative two is the X number and this three is the Y number. So the X number goes this way horizontally and the y number goes vertically up and down so the idea here is that we need to move this shape by this vector um if it was a simpler shape what we simply could do would be to write down the coordinates and add the vector to each coordinate but this doesn't it's not worth it right here since we have the grid and we have the vector we can simply count <clears throat> Um, so negative 2 means that we're going this direction and positive 3 well, means that we're going up. So let's start with this point. I'm going to use, let me change that color here. Starting with this one means that we must go, this point is going to move 2 across, 1, 2, and move 3 up, 1, 2, 3. Right there. This one is going to go 2 across, 1, 2, go up, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So there it is. Um, go to this one right here. It's going to go two across. One, two, go up. One, two, three. One, two, three. And at the top here, go two across. One, two. One, two, three, up. And this other point is going to follow it just like that. And the last one, go two across. One, two. One, two, three, up. And you will realize that you have your shape. And the only thing left to do is to use your ruler and draw it in. Now, it will also be useful to label your diagram, but this um, shape doesn't have any individual points. So there is no penalty for not labeling it. We simply just need to draw it in. So normally you would write on the coordinates and add the vector to each one to get the image. But in this case, since the grid is there and the vector is there. We can just count it and move it. So this is the image um, T. So that is the only label that we need to put there. Label it T, there we go. <clears throat> Moving on. Here we have functions. If the functions F and G are defined as follows. F of X is equal to five X plus seven and g of x is equal to 3x minus 1. So we are asked to find g of 1 third, and what it's really asking us is to plug 1 third into g and see what we get as a result. So we're going to substitute 1 third into g, g of x is equal to 3x minus 1. So we're going to substitute the x with 1 third, so it becomes 3 times, oops, 3 times 1 third minus one and that gives us three times one third this is very very ugly let me just rewrite it over um three times one third that's better minus one three times one third is one and one minus one here gives us zero so when we input one third into this g function what we get out of it is zero so g of one third is equal to zero Now here, for the second part, f inverse of negative 3, what it's really asking us is what number do we need to put into this function? 
to get negative 3 for the answer. Notice the inverse here, F inverse. Notice the difference here. This says G of one third. It says F inverse, which is asking a totally different thing, which is saying really, what number do you need to put into this to get negative 3 for the answer? And to get that, all that we need to do is take this um, here, make an equation, 5x minus 5x plus 7, make it equal to negative 3, and solve that linear equation that results from it. So here we have 5x is equal to negative 3 minus 7. So we have 5x is equal to negative 10, and therefore x is equal to negative 10 divided by 5, which is negative 2. So it's saying that if we want negative 3 for the answer, what we need to do is input negative 2. And you can test it if you want. So we'll look at it. 5 times negative 2 plus 7 gives us negative 10. And that gives us negative 3. So if you input negative 2, you will get negative 3 for the answer. <laughs> so this here is our solution. Moving on. Here we have a line L that is drawn on the grid below. And we want to write the equation of line L in the form y equal mx plus c. We call this the slope intercept form y equal mx plus c, slope intercept, sloped. This is the slope, the gradient. And this is the c, which is the. Um, let me just write that down. The C is the y-intercept. All right. So the y-intercept is easy to find. You simply need to look where the line crosses the y-axis, and it crosses it here at 1. So we know that number, 1. And then we need to find the m. To find the m, we need to actually work out the gradient. And the gradient can be found by making a simple triangle on the line or picking two coordinates on the line and using the formula. Since it's here and it's convenient, I'm just going to use the triangle and use the rise over run. So here we have the rise over run. The rise on this triangle is one. M is equal to rise over run. So the rise is one and the run is three, that's three boxes. Now, since our line is sloping in this direction, we know that the gradient is positive, so hence that. So we can rewrite our equation now as y is equal to one third, that's our m, x, and plus one, the c value. So that's the equation of our line in the form y equal mx plus c. Next, the equation of a different line q is y is equal to minus 2x plus 8. Write down the coordinates of the point where q crosses the x-axis. Um, when q crosses the x-axis, let's, let's go back a little bit over here and look. When this line L crosses the x-axis, we notice that um, the, the um, y value here coming down the y value is zero so what we're going to do is simply to make this y value zero so we have minus 2x plus 8 is equal to zero and solve this equation that results so we're going to have here 8 is equal to 2x and so um dividing by 2 we end up with x is equal to 4 so if x is 4 and y is 0, remember we want, a, want coordinates, which so we need two numbers, x, y. So the x is 4 and the y is 0. Now here we want to write down the coordinates of the point where q crosses the y-axis. Now also looking at this one, notice when this graph crosses the y-axis, looking at this axis, now the x number is also 0. So we simply need to make the x number 0 in this. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 8, which tells us that our y value is equal to 8. And so our coordinate then, the x number is 0, and the y number is 8. So we have our coordinates. And on the grid, 
we're going to draw the graph of line Q. Since it's a straight line, all that we need are these two coordinates. So let's go back here and draw line Q with these coordinates, 4, 0, and a 0, 8. Let's mark them, 4, 0, which is here, and 0, 8, which is here. So let's connect those with a straight line. There we go. And this is the equation. This is the equation y is equal to minus 2x plus 8. So let's write it in. y equal minus 2x plus 8. And this one is y is equal to 1 third x plus 1. All right, now that we've drawn in our line, complete the statement below. According to the graph, the solution of the system of equations consisting of L and Q is, I want to say system of equations, it's literally talking simultaneous equation. So what you're actually doing is solving a pair of simultaneous equations using the graphical method. And the solution, of course, is right here where the two straight lines meet. And that point there is 3, 2. And so let's finish our question. According to the graph, the solution for the system of equations consisting of line L and line Q is 3, 2, which means at the point where x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 2. Let's verify. x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 2. So if you were supposed to solve a pair of simultaneous equations using the two equations that we have, that's what we would get, x equal 3, and y equal 2. And that's it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and best wishes as you continue to study.